Welcome to this little video about how to expand the diatonic scale or what is more commonly referred to as um, the major scale or the minor scale. Same thing. Um, I'm going to show you a quick technique that you can use to simply just uh, have that diatonic scale sound very exotic, very, very fast. It will actually take you just a couple of minutes to learn it and then you can just start using it right away. Um, and Coming up with these shortcuts is not just a way to, to you know, fake your way uh, to a result. It's actually a way to, you know, move into a new style of music as fast as possible so you can start to explore what goes on in there, um, inside that style of music. And by, by focusing on how to get there, how to get as far as possible, as fast as possible, will really boost your progress because then you'll be in that you know you'll be able to play that style of music and then you'll be even more motivated to just look more into it and figure out uh, what to do uh, other than just using a, a little quick method that, that I'm going to show you um, so it's pretty it's pretty simple and what you do is you take your um, you take your normal uh, scale here I'm just going to put on the headphones so I can hear what I'm doing uh, you take your normal uh, A minor scale, which is also a C major scale, but let's just focus on the A here. Normal A minor scale, uh, as f also referred to as an A uh, natural minor. <laughs> uh, so we take that and we just focus on the, the cage shapes, uh, the five different uh, shapes. Uh, shapes that that most people learn right away and the, the cool thing about these shapes is that they only uh, you, you don't have to stretch beyond four frets so each finger can be assigned to one fret in the position um, with three notes per string scale shapes uh, you have these two whole notes uh, after each other here and and and, and that's of course another challenge than just playing uh, whole steps and half steps um, but uh, so let's just focus on those when I explain this and we take the first shape here of A minor which is just five seven eight on the two lowest strings five fifth fret seventh and eighth and then we have two two lonely notes on the D string in the fifth and seventh fret you can look in the in the charts that come with this lesson if you go to my website click the link below if you're on YouTube um, and it'll take you directly to a page there um, where you can download that you can also download the video this video two lonely notes in the fifth and seventh then we have the, the, the fourth the fifth and the seventh fret on the G string the fifth the sixth and the eighth fret on the D string and then on the high E string we have the fifth the seventh and the eighth so that's our shape so instead of just learning a new uh, scale shape here we're going to simply learn how to change each string because you either have a configuration of notes like this I know this is a bit far from the camera but you have a whole tone step and a half tone step or a semi tone right there which on a guitar means you have a uh, two frets between the first two notes in the fifth and seventh and then you have that just one fret apart in the eighth fret uh, with your pinky there <laughs> so when you have those three notes there any time in the scale wherever you are on the fretboard any time you have this kind of shape on one string you can move this first finger here up one fret and simply uh, forget about the first note in the fifth fret and then have it be played in the sixth fret y you don't rest on this note this A sharp or B flat but you use it as 
as a note that you start on perhaps or you or you use it as a passing tone but as long as you don't stop on it or you can but it will give you a very dissonant sound which is sometimes really cool and so that's what you do so you don't have to learn a scale shape the only shape you have to learn is this one uh, for now anyway <laughs> so every time you bump into a shape like that on the fretboard you can do that I have the same shape in the 10th, the 12th, and the 13th fret on the high E string as well. If I go up, that's the first time I meet that shape. And I can move that note in the 10th fret up to the 11th. So, that's the first little concept here. Let's take the, the second one and jump to the B string. Here in this shape that I showed you first, we have a note in the 5th, the 6th and the 8th fret. So we have a semitone first, which is just one fret apart, and a whole tone afterwards, which is two frets apart. Whenever you have that configuration of notes on one string, within the scale, no matter where you are, you can simply put a note in both ends of these three notes. So you can put a note, a semitone away from the first one, below your first finger, and you can put a note, a semitone away, or above uh, your fourth finger. So every time you have the combination of a semitone and a whole tone on one string, you can go... So you can go down one fret, and you can go up one fret. Let's just use the up one fret. So now I'm just playing up and down these four notes. I can go down one step as well. So now I have this little thing I can play around with. And my, 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 the notes that I rest on, or consider more safe than the others, are, are these notes from the diatonic scale. So that's a nice little line there. I'm just going, starting on on the fifth fret in the fifth, fifth fret, and then going up, and then just going down and up again. So uh, you do that every time you're in a scale shape that looks like this on one string. Then in these uh, cage shapes, we have. We have a, a lonely whole tone step as well, where we only have two, uh, two frets there, or two notes on one string. And in the case of A minor, it's always the same two notes, by the way. It's always the G and the A when it comes to A minor or C major. Uh, when we have the same up here in the second, but that's also a G and an A no matter where you are. No matter where you are. So each time that appears in these shapes, you can just skip the first note in your first finger, move that up one half step. This is the seventh of the A minor anyway, so, so you're going from a regular seventh to a raised seventh, or a sharp seventh. So let me just play, and you can do that every time you, you, you reach that, those lonely two notes there, anywhere in the scale. Unless you're using three notes per string uh, uh, shapes here, because in that case then you have two whole tone steps on two strings, and that's another story. But just for now, use the, these shapes, and then use these little variations. Let me just play around with the whole shape on each string. So on the first one, I have this whole tone, half tone, or semi tone. Where I can move up and move this note up. So I'm just doing the same thing as up here. So I can go. Sounds a bit off now, but uh, then the next one is exactly the same. And the next string, which was the two lonely notes. On the next string, 
next string we have the half and the whole and we can go up and we can go down look in the charts we have the same on the B string and we have we have that first note moved on the high E string look in the charts as I said and you will see all of these so nice results just by you know remembering the diatonic scale and then changing that instead of using new scale shapes of course this will um, this will make you actually play the diatonic scale a lot more because you're going to return to that all the time and then you will move into these sounds whereas if you were playing the double harmonic scale for instance uh, which is <laughs> then you would get that sound all the time. With this little tool, you can go back and forth between and then So you can go back and forth between the natural minor and then this expanded version. And of course, in the upcoming program uh, that I'm releasing here soon, uh, we'll be taking uh, all the minor scales uh, including the double harmonic minor scale, and then we'll be uh, taking all the chords from these scales, uh, derived from all these scales, and then we'll learn to put them together, and then in a chord progression, move from the natural minor to the harmonic, to the melodic, to the double harmonic, uh, by taking chords from these scales, and then creating chord progressions with which you can play four different scales uh, at the right time, at the right moment, and we're going to learn how to do that by using our ears. Uh, rather than theory and so so but we'll talk about that in another video uh, and I'll give you a little exercise there as well but for now let's just listen to how this uh, little idea of expanding uh, the scale how that sounds when you use it uh, over some music <laughs> That is the tool of the day and I hope you appreciate it and even though you know exotic scales then use it uh, to to be able to go from that natural minor sound and then into some more exotic sounding uh, lines there right away um, so practice it all you can go to the website download the jam track uh, so you have something to play over and then uh, really listen to the sounds in the background the chords that I'm playing and then see if you can figure out when to move into some exotic sounding notes and when to not uh, do it. <laughs> so that's all for this video. I hope to see you in the next free video on uh, Fusion Flamingo.